Our next storyteller, Janet Allen, was a model Peace Corps volunteer in Sierra Leone. She had a successful project, she made friends, she adapted to the food and the culture and learned the language. Then one day, a village elder suddenly and dramatically banished her from the community. Here's Janet to tell you more. I'm 24 years old. I'm in the Peace Corps and I live in a remote village in Sierra Leone, West Africa. And I'm walking back to my house and I am shaking. And I'm shaking for two reasons. I'm shaking because I feel incredibly powerful. I can't believe what I just did. It was amazing. And at the same time, it's like, oh my God, what did I just do? I can't believe what I just did. I was just banished from a whole fifth of the village by a village elder. And not only was I banished by a village elder, not just any elder, this is the elder that on my third day in the village gave me my name, Kariatu. The name that when I walk through the village, everyone calls me. Tanamo Fene Kariatu, Inuwali Kariatu, that's how they greet me. And he was the one that supported me when I was first working with farmers, encouraging the farmers to work with me. And so I own the credibility that I have here to him. And now, I can't believe, he just banished me. <sighs> oh, I don't know what this is going to mean. This all started about four months ago. A good friend of mine, Mariama, was beaten by her husband severely. So severely that she ended up in the hospital with internal bleeding for five days. She almost died. Her husband was one of this elder's sons. And when she got out of the hospital, she decided she wanted nothing at all to do with her husband, Lamine. So she went back to her family, who lived in another village. And I didn't see her for a while, until a few days ago. And a few days ago, she showed up at my house. And I was really happy to see her. Mariam, it's great to see you. And what are you doing here? And she said, I've gone back to Lamine. She said, when she returned to her family, her family was shamed by her, by the, by the fact that she had been beaten. You see, she said, my family is poor, and the elder, and Lamine, and his father, they are very important people. They're important to the town, they're important to the chieftain as a whole. And my family begged me to return to them. And then Lamine's family came and begged me, and it came to a point where I felt like I, I had to come back. And so, so here I am. And without even thinking, without giving it a thought whatsoever, I said, Mariama, what he did to you was wrong. He almost killed you. If you ever feel in danger for your life, let me know. Come to me. I will do something. I will get you out of here. I will get you to a safe place. I, I don't know what I will do, but I will do it. And then I you know, went around about my day. I didn't really think about it at all until this morning. A little boy showed up at my doorstep, and he said, the pa wants to see you. Now, there's a lot of little kids in the village, and I don't know who they belong to all the time, and, but they all oftentimes will come and summon me to go and meet with some pa, and I go with them, because it's usually just to say hello or whatever. So I follow him, and we go to this elder's house. And when we get to the elder's house, I go inside the house, and there's no one in the main parlor, which is where you would usually meet someone. But instead, they lead me to another room. And in this room, on the far wall, the elder is sitting in a chair. And to his right is one of his sons, another son, not Lamine, sitting in a chair. And then there's the door, and there's a chair right by the door, and they beckon me to sit in the chair by the door. This is a formal meeting. And the elder speaks Creole, which is the lingua franca of Sierra Leone, and I also speak Creole, but today he's not speaking Creole. He's speaking Susu, which is the, the native tongue of the village that I live in, and he's having it translated by the son. That's why the son is there. And he begins his speech. <laughs> really, is a speech. He says, uh, he's obviously has found out that I've made this offer to Mariama, and he begins to talk about how I have um, been interfering in his family and how inappropriate that is and, and how it's just not done and he goes on for quite some time. 
And as he's talking, I'm sitting, sitting straighter in my chair, and my stomach is whirling with this smoldering anger. But it's not, it's controlled, it's contained, but it's there, and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and he continues to go on, and then after a while, he finishes his long, translated statement, speech, whatever, and it's my turn to supposedly, I guess, apologize or something, I don't know. I took a deep breath, and I sat up straight, and in my very best Creo, I said, Me not stranger, I'm a stranger here in your country, and I know that because I'm a stranger here, that I have to adapt to the way you do things, to your culture and how your culture is. And I know that in this culture, men meet their wives. They take a little switch and they kind of stop them to discipline them. They don't take them to a far hill and beat them until they're almost dead and leave them for dead. That, in my country, is attempted murder. And if you won't stand up for Mariama, then I will stand up for Mariama. And if you think that your son is not your problem, and that I'm more of a problem, then you have an even bigger problem than I thought you had. And it was at that point that he kicked me out of his house and banished me from his part of the village. So now I'm walking home, and I'm wondering how this is going to impact my work with the rest of the village or whether I'm done here and I just completely screwed up, I don't know. And I get back to my house and I'm pacing <laughs> and two friends of mine come by, two men, they're about my age, and they come by and they, I tell them what happens and they look at each other and they look at me and they look at each other and they smile and they say, Janet, you know how we have pumps all around the village for water? Like, yeah. Well, you know the pump down on that part of the village? You know how that pump does not work? I'm like, yeah. Well, it doesn't work because there are a lot of people that are really mad at that elder. And so they turned off the pump. And so he has to go look somewhere else. What you did is something that a lot of people in this village would like to have said to him, but could never say to him. But because you're a stranger, you could say it. You are going to be just fine. This is going to be fine. Do not worry about it. And they were right. I mean, other than a whole fifth of the village that I didn't work with, the rest of the farmers and everyone that I've been working with, it worked out fine. I kept going on. And then a couple months later, Mariana showed up at my doorstep. And I said, Mariana, it's great to see you, but I can't see you. We're not supposed to see each other. And she said, oh, no, no, it's okay. The pa said that it's okay. I can come and spend time with you. That's fine. And I said, oh, great. This is great. And then a couple days later, I was standing on my veranda, my front porch, and I was kind of looking out. And I noticed that Lamine was walking towards my house. And I kind of said, hey, Lamine, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I'm, I'm coming to greet you. And I said, oh, no, 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 you're banished. Thank you. <laughs>